to be honest, I think we <coughs> we started very well. We wanted Bissino to be able to start from the back because we knew his his diagonal balls and long balls for Mutiza would cause problems, and we instructed Gaston to be very close to him and make it a little bit difficult for him to play that long ball because when he does not have that, there is a possibility that he might want to play in between the lines, and if we can cut. They, they can be very open in that space and we, we benefited from those situations. Uh, one must say the first 30 minutes looked, looked very good. We could have easily scored more than three. But I felt at uh, around 30th minute, 31st, somewhere there, that we started putting the foot off the pedal. We started playing a lot of rondos uh, in and around the corners without depth, without penetration. And we... I was personally very, very unhappy with that and we pushed the players a little bit to understand how important it is because a game like this uh, is not dead at three goals because the moment they score one, this game can change completely. Then we pushed them, we demanded another three or four if we could get and uh, they delivered and I think uh, the second half performance was really very incisive. Uh, not maybe the most beautiful but more clinical in trying to get as quickly as possible into the opposition's defensive threat and creating scoring opportunities. And I think we created enough for Kemet probably to have scored a hat-trick as well coming late because if uh, Neo late he saw him and he laid that pass to him, it could have been a second. And the other one is the one that he got when he just got into the pitch and he, he, instead of taking two touches, he took one touch. But... Uh, the overall is we are we are happy that all our strikers are getting goals. The confidence is high amongst that group, and that is very exciting for us. So you've been asked this several times, but it's pertinent again. Shalom Lile, just in terms of not only the goals but the work contribution, the pressing. <coughs> the, uh, can you just maybe give us another? eulogy to the talent that is Peter Shalolile? For me, to summarize maybe what I see from Peter, you know the, the gods of football, they, they also look at, at how much application do you put into the game, uh, the level of professionalism. He runs the hardest in the team, he works very hard. And uh, others would say he's lucky because when you find him in positions where he taps in, he scores with one touch or that little header here and there, it looks like, hey, this guy is very fortunate or he's very lucky. But for me, when opportunity meets hard work, a lot of people will say you are lucky. And that's what happens with Peter. He works very hard. He's uh, probably one good example in our team uh, that... Everybody else can, can follow suit, and the team is working hard in general, but Peter is one of the most professional boys I've ever worked with, and no wonder. I, I don't think he's one of the most, most really, really very talented players, but because he gives his heart and soul to, to his game and to his craft, that's why God gives him what, what, what he's good at. And sometimes I used, I used to say, Peter is, is that guy who may not play very good football, but will score a lot of goals in football. So you will choose what you want. If you want someone to dribble, then Peter might not be the one. But if you want somebody to put the ball in the, at the back of the net, Peter is definitely the one for that, because he has always done that even before he arrived at Sundance. When you are substituted, Peter, you know, something struck me. Um, you see, mostly when players are playing, they walk. Uh, I mean, this is a guy who has just got a head kick and he's been substituted. He's actually running uh, to come out so the teammate can come on. I guess that ties up with the professionalism that you're talking about. And also, is he uh, your player of the season? <coughs> Let me start with the first one. The first one, I think. Uh, I saw that gesture and I also welcomed it because I, I really appreciated what he did because in as much as we were leading with a lot of goals, uh, one would have said, why is he not walking and delaying? But he's also thinking for his teammate that is coming in, that also this, this guy must also get a few minutes. Uh, if I delay, maybe I'm taking a little bit from him. And that for me was a very good gesture. 
Though sometimes in, in a different game, maybe I would not encourage that. But uh, on this one, I really liked what he did because that was very positive. And as for him being the, the player of the season, I think that will be that will be too early. We still have a lot of matches to play and there are a lot of players that are doing well in the team. But he'll definitely be amongst the candidates. Um, coach, back-to-back -back matches where you've scored more than five goals, um, you know, including the game on Saturday of the Nepean Cup, and now you're going to um, Angola for the Champions League. How much of a confidence booster, maybe, you know, these two games are going to give you guys um, you know, as you guys travel to Petro? Uh, the strange part is that uh, uh, amongst the players, it will really be a very big confidence boost. But amongst us coaches, I think it's it's headache. Because you, you ask yourself who should play that one and who should not play. Because uh, the players that played midweek, the uh, weekend, they played very well. And the players that got an opportunity to play, they also played very well. And all of them have scored a lot of goals. Then the question is, who do you then choose for, for that match here, Petro? Which will require a lot of... Uh, of work from us as coaches because in profiling the opponents we, we really have to cut it down to the bone and really understand exactly who who would be suitable for that type of opposition vis-a-vis -vis the, the type of individuals that Petro has. So it's going to be a very big headache but uh, yes you are right. On the side of the players they will go into that match with uh, their chins high uh, hoping to, to also do well, which is very positive, but you must also guard against an element of uh, complacency or arrogance or overconfidence, uh, because Angola is a strange environment. Their temperatures are very different. It can be very hot there. So it's very important that we, we look at this thing very closely, but I, I've got all the confidence in the coaches that we work with and the, everybody else that we have in within the club. <coughs> Coach, congratulations on the victory. I think all deserved. I also want to go back to the Peter Shadowlier moment, Coach, when he was substituted as well. The entire technical team stood up. The players as well, they came to him, they hugged him, they kissed him, they caressed him. That's how good a player he is. And maybe looking at the record books, he's got up 21 league goals now. And uh, the last person to score, I was told by my colleague here that he was still on one of So he's taken the beat and from one of the greatest writers South Africa has ever had. That gets of the entire technical team. Why was that? The only thing I did not see is the kisses. <laughs> <coughs> but uh, I, I would not, I would not put it in a, in any particular way because I did not look at the other substitutes. But we we always have respect for one another in the team, and uh, it starts from us, the coaches. If we're showing that kind of respect to to these boys then we will get that respect back. It's, it's very important that we, we show that we respect their craft and we, they are not just here because uh, they are talented, but they are also good human beings that must be treated with an element of kindness. And uh, if the whole team uh, stood up for Peter, I would not be surprised because uh, it's a mentality and a culture that we are trying to build of uh, respect, humility, at all times and making sure that we, we honor good performances and we, we respect one another. And that's for me is the most important thing in our position as leaders to make sure that the, we always inculcate this mentality of having respect for one another because uh, there are times where the game will not be what we wanted it to be, but we st must still remain the same people. And as for supporting Peter, I think everybody would easily do that because he's one hell of a team player. Everybody would, would always want all the best for Peter. That's why even when he scores, everybody gets excited because he is the type of a person to everyone. Be it he's playing, he's not playing. He, he, he's, he, even when the going is tough for him, he's still, he's still one very humble young boy. And uh, they are very rare people that when everything goes well for them, like Peter, but they still give you the same respect and the same humility that... Uh, he was giving you when he before he scored his first goal. A lot of a lot of boys sometimes when things are going well for them they get carried away and become arrogant or others maybe uh, lose respect. But Peter 
is one hell of a very good example of, of how a professional footballer or how a person should, should, should look at others no matter what he has in life. We'll take the last three questions. Um, coach, uh, having scored three goals, uh, but, sorry, six goals and won three points today, um, two, which practically means like the, the, the we, 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 sorry, <laughs> let me rephrase my question. So having scored three goals, I mean six goals and, and won three points today, we are two games away from reaching 63 points and no other team can reach, I think there's one other team that can reach 63 points, uh, which means two more wins with superior goal difference, which means two, two more wins, practically we are champions. Is the champagne in the fridge, coach? And second question is, um, are we, if we win all our games, we get to 72 points, is that still in our sight? <coughs> yeah, uh, to be honest, we are really not looking at, at how many matches do we need to play in order to win the league, if, if I'm honest with you. Today, we were pushing because this cycle we did not do as, as good as we wanted. We had to make sure that we win this match today to make sure that we, we've got a decent outcome uh, from this uh, cycle of five matches. It was not one of our best, but it was not terrible. It, it, it was 10 points out of 15 points that we could have had, and we wanted more than that. So we are going into the next cycle now of five matches, and we have already spoken about uh, improving our benchmarks. And our benchmark for last season was 67 points. If we can improve that, it would be good for us. But our biggest benchmark that Sundowns has achieved before is 71 points. And if we are to, to, to get to 71 points, then it means we must win all the, the matches that we are going to play. So that is, that is the direction that we want to take. That is the, the, the mentality that we have to try and, and compete against ourselves. Because uh, it does not help sometimes to focus on just winning the championship because I guess this is one of the things that has made the PSG in France not to, to be very dominant in the Champions League because they are satisfied by achieving whatever they can achieve in, 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 in France. But when, we, when, we, when they go out to continental football, it's not always as easy as uh, the championship that they, they win at home. So our target is, is always to, to better our best because we know the challenge that we have in the Champions League is it's, it's bigger than, uh, than all of us. So if we cannot drop the ball and say, even if we get a draw in this match or we lose this match, it's not important because we don't want to develop that culture and that culture can be very dangerous because once you start drawing and losing more often than you win, then you get into that mode of, of surviving. And surviving now becomes, if, at least if we did not lose, it's okay. And we would not want that. And we would not want to be in a phase of, of competing a lot. We would prefer to dominate than to, than to compete. Okay. Coach, you, you spoke about the, 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 the five-phase matches. I know it's only in the league, but when you look at your last five matches in all competitions, you should be pleased by the fact that you have managed to score 22 goals in that last five matches in all competitions. Yeah, our targets when it comes to goals are, is not very hefty. We, we are only looking to score two. So if we score two goals in a match, we, we are happy. If we can keep maybe four clean sheets in five matches, we, we are happy with that. So when we score 22, we don't, we, we don't want to get carried away because that has got a potential of getting you carried away. So we appreciate the fact that the team is scoring, but we our focus is always to try and maximize the number of clean sheets, maximize the, the possibility of scoring more than one goal, because we believe if we can score more than one goal, we stand a chance of winning that match. Last question. So can I ask you for an update on Kutsia's surgery and it's, and do you think Sabedra will play again this season? Uh, Kutsia, I'm not too sure that we'll be able to, to see him this season. If, if it happens, we'll all appreciate because we would not want to rush. I was asking almost the same question mm -hmm. from our doctors yesterday about Kutsia, but the answers that I got uh, were sufficient to make me say, let's, let's do the right thing and, and not hope to have him very soon. If it does happen, we'll appreciate but as for Savetra, we, we are going to see him. We will definitely see him. 
it was a close call for this Angola game. We could have easily travelled with the team to Angola, but we felt uh, we don't need to have, we don't have to rush. But we believe when we come back, he might be in a better space to to help us. I'm sorry, will Rulani go as well? Is he is he going to plough on the plane tomorrow? Will he come later, maybe? We are hoping for that. Uh, we are because we are travelling tomorrow, and I think the funeral was today. Uh, maybe he will be driving by now so that he can join us in camp.